Hello, this is Abbott Austin for another edition of Talk Lexio, and this time we will do Lexio Divina on the letter of to the Galatians, St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 5, verses 16 through 25. So this is the second reading, and uh, there's a couple options for the second reading tomorrow, Pentecost Sunday. Uh, this is one of the options. So again, it's Galatians 5, 16 through 25. It's a little bit of a longer passage, but we'll read it through twice and pay attention. There's really a lot going on in this passage. So let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, open our hearts and our minds to understand your scriptures, that we may have the joy, that we may know your, understand your scriptures, and have the joy of living by them through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so again, Galatians 5, 16 through 25. Brothers and sisters, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. So again, I'll read this passage another time. Pay attention. Again, there's so much going on in this passage. Brothers and sisters, live by the Spirit and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Now those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let's also follow the Spirit. So again, a very rich passage, a lot to think about here. And so what I'll do in, in meditation, as we move on to meditation, is I'll just offer some things to think about in here. So um, one of them is simply... Uh, Right at the beginning, what is meant by the Spirit? So it starts off, brothers and sisters, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. Okay, now in some translations, the Spirit will be capital S, indicating that this is refer referring to the Holy Spirit. Live by the Holy Spirit, right? The God the Spirit, right? In other translations, there will be a, a lowercase s. Right, so that it's not so much, it's not referring to God primarily, God the Holy Spirit, but referring to a part of us. So we can live according to the flesh, as a, a kind of a lower part within us, and then we can, or we can live according to the Spirit, which is kind of a higher part within us. That's one way of reading this as well. Uh, in the Greek, the original Greek, you don't have the capitalization. It wouldn't, even if it's referring to God, there wouldn't be a capital there. Right, so it's, it's really up to us to make an um, interpretation of what is going on here. <clears throat> so um, what you think that is, is then that it also influences what you think the flesh is, right? So if you think uh, the spirit's referring to a higher part of us, then the flesh will be referring to a lower part within us. 
And it's not that that lower part is bad, it's just that we shouldn't uh, be following all its promptings, right? So the lower part within us, uh, the flesh, should be um, following the lead of the spirit, right? That's one way of looking at it. Now, if you look at the spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, God, then flesh can take on another meaning. One possible meaning of flesh is simply human nature, right? Just like the word became flesh, right? The word took on a human nature. So um, flesh here can also refer to simply our human nature, but understood in a way that's separated from God. It's human flesh in a way trying to live on its own, independently of God, trying to find its true happiness without God's help and by not walking according to the ways of God. So flesh can be understood in that way too. And so that way of living a human life is opposed to the Holy Spirit who wants to take us up into uh, his love and lead us to the Father through Christ. Right, so um, that's another way of looking at it, right? There's a lot of richness here. Now, um, another thing too is there's a reference here that says, brothers and sisters, live by the Spirit. Well, a more literal, literal translation would be walk in the Spirit kind of move about in the spirit, okay? So you're kind of walking in the spirit. And then when you get to the very end, it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also follow the spirit. But there again, the, the phrase is not, it can be interpreted follow, but it also can be interpreted walk in the spirit, um, submit to the spirit, be in line with the spirit. So maybe walk in line with the spirit would be a good translation there, All right? So this idea of, of if not just claiming that you're in the Spirit, but actually um, walking in the way of the Spirit, right? Uh, following the movement of the Spirit and your actions and how you live. And that would fit, fits in with this list of things that if we live by the flesh, we have a lot of things bad going on. Immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry, uh, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, and so on, right? So a few references to sexual sins. Uh, a few re references to anger and outbursts and uh, factions uh, and a whole bunch of the hatreds, right? Rivalry, right? So that kind of dissension or uh, sexual sin seem to be especially highlighted here. Uh, indulgence and so on. Okay, and uh, St. Paul says, I warn you, if you live in those ways, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to go to heaven. Okay, but then if we are walking in the spirit in line with the spirit, we have the things that mark that, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, right? So uh, just looking at that, uh, the phrasing there, this idea of walking in the Spirit, walking in line with the Spirit, it seems to be an emphasis St. Paul is making here. One last thing just to note here, um, it says something the saints have really reflected on. It's, it's a really profound thing uh, to think about and especially in this letter uh, to the Galatians. So St. Paul says, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And later he'll say, if you're living according to the fruits of the Spirit, there is no law against that. So here, to, uh, what does it mean to live according to the law? Uh, what does it mean to live under a law? It's this idea of the law is kind of over you and imposing its way on you. You from within do not want to follow the law, but the law kind of comes down upon you you're under it, and you're being kind of um, forced, in a way, to live by it. Okay, and St. Paul's saying, if you have the Spirit, you're not under the law. It doesn't mean you don't follow the law, but it's not something that's imposed upon you. It's rather, you have within you the Holy Spirit that prompts you from within that you want to do these good things. They don't have to be imposed on you. You actually want to do them because you have within you the promptings, the energy, the life of the Holy Spirit, the life of God. Right, so uh, not being under the law, um, but in a way, um, because there is no law against what you're doing in the Spirit, you're in the law. You're walking according to the law of God. All right, so there's a lot going on here. So much to think about. The letter to the Galatians, of course, also is just so rich with many things, and we're getting a little sampling of that here. So um, perhaps some of these reflections are just a little point to help you in your meditation and uh, to think about something further and uh, ponder that for a while. Well, now move to the third step of Lexi Divina, which is to offer a prayer for our meditation. So I'll offer such a prayer now. Almighty God, I ask that you renew the life of the Spirit within me so that I am not under the law, following your ways by imposition, but having within me 
the love of you, the love of your ways that makes me want to do them, gives me the energy to do the things that you want of me. And I ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then the final fourth step of Lexi Divina, of course, is contemplation. You rest in God's presence. You've been brought close to God in a way by offering a prayer that lines up with what God wants, so that you want with what, what God wants, so you have that alignment, that closeness. So let's not just observe some moments of quiet in a contemplative spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for those who have joined me. May God bless you on this Pentecost Sunday, a wonderful uh, feast day where we celebrate the coming of the Spirit, uh, fulfilling in a way the work of Christ rising from the dead to the right hand of the Father, now sending his Spirit and giving birth to the church. So um, have a blessed Pentecost. May God bless you. Pray for us here at St. Procopius Abbey, if you will. God bless.